Welcome to CNU, the video series that will teach you everything you need to know to provide excellent nutrition care. In this video, I'm going to teach you about tube feeding calculations. By the end of the video, you should be able to follow a six-step algorithm to calculate continuous tube feeding and write a prescription for a continuous tube feeding regimen. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. We begin by looking at the six-step algorithm that I just mentioned. The first step is to estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. Then, you select an appropriate tube feeding formula, determine how much formula is required to meet the estimated nutritional needs, and divide that rate of formula by 24 hours to get the feeding rate. Next, you calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load. And finally, you establish the free water flushes needed to ensure the patient is properly hydrated. Only once you've done all of these will you be ready to write a prescription. In order to show you how this works, I'm going to walk you through a case study. Today, we have Mr. Jones, who is a 68-year-old man with a past medical history of hypertension. Unfortunately, Mr. Jones was found on the floor of his home by his wife with slurred speech and altered mental status. Emergency medical services were called, and Mr. Jones was sent to the local hospital where he was diagnosed with a stroke. His condition worsened on arrival, and due to acute respiratory failure, the decision was made to intubate him. You are the registered dietitian, and you have been asked by the medical team to assess Mr. Jones for tube feeding. Upon review of the electronic medical record, you discover he is 6 feet tall and weighs 84 kilograms, which gives him a body mass index of 25.1. After speaking with his wife, you find that the patient was eating well leading up to the incident and has had no changes to body weight in the past year. You also discuss the case with the doctor. She tells you she anticipates the patient will be unable to eat by mouth for more than one week, that hemodynamic stability has been achieved, and that there are presently no electrolyte abnormalities or pressure injuries. Considering all of these factors, you and the doctor decide the patient is a good candidate to receive tube feeding through a nasogastric tube. The first step is to estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. For tube feeding, it's most important to look at calories, protein, and fluid. There are a number of ways to estimate nutritional needs, such as indirect calorimetry and predictive equations. However, for this patient, we're just going to use a simple weight-based calculation with the goal of weight maintenance. For calories, we'll aim for a range of 25 to 30 calories per kilogram. For protein, we'll aim for 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram. And for fluid, we'll match the number of milliliters provided to total calories. In other words, 1 milliliter per calorie. To get the calories, we'll take 25 and multiply it by 84, which gives us a lower end of 2100. Then we'll take 30 and do the same, giving us an upper end of 2520. With protein, we'll start with 1.2 and multiply it by 84 to get a lower end of 100. Then we'll take 1.5 and do the same, giving us an upper end of 126. There is no need for a calculator to do the fluid. We'll just do 1 milliliter per calorie, or 2100 to 2520. The more complicated a patient gets, the more these ranges may change. For example, if Mr. Jones had congestive heart failure or end-stage renal disease, we may restrict fluid to 1 liter per day. 
If Mr. Jones had pressure injuries or a large surgical wound, we may consider providing more calories and protein for healing. Nutritional needs are very situational, and learning the appropriate ranges comes as you are exposed to different medical conditions and patient populations. Once you have established the estimated nutritional needs, the next step is to select a tube feeding formula. If you have watched my video on formula, you know there are four categories, and they are standard, pre-digested, disease-specific, and blenderized. Since Mr. Jones is intubated in an acute care setting, a blenderized formula is not going to be the best option. Mr. Jones doesn't appear to have any unique nutritional needs to warrant a disease-specific formula either, and there are no known gastrointestinal issues that would lead us to consider pre-digested. So, the obvious choice is to begin with a standard formula. Within standard formulas, there are differences in energy density ranging from 1 calorie per milliliter to 2 calories per milliliter. For Mr. Jones, any energy density could technically work. I would personally eliminate the 1.5 calorie and 2 calorie choices because they would require us to give a high amount of free water. Then between the 1 calorie and 1.2 calorie formulas, I'd be more inclined to go with the 1.2 for a patient of this size just because I know from experience that it will result in a reasonable feeding rate and a reasonable amount of free water. The 1.2 calorie formula we have is 81% water and provides 55 grams of protein per liter. Now that we have selected a formula, we can determine how much formula is required to meet the estimated nutritional needs. To do this, we take the total number of calories needed and divide it by the energy density of the formula. At this stage, instead of working with a range of calories, you can pick a single number. I'm going to choose 2300 calories, which is right in the middle of the range we created. 2300 calories divided by 1.2 calories per milliliter leaves us with approximately 1,917 milliliters per day. Next, we divide the amount of formula by 24 hours since the goal is to provide a continuous feeding regimen. This step gives us the feeding rate expressed in milliliters per hour. 1,917 milliliters of formula per day divided by 24 hours per day equals 79.9 milliliters per hour, which we will round to the nearest 5 milliliters to 80 milliliters per hour. From there, we will use the feeding rate to calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load. For the energy load, you multiply the feeding rate by 24 hours and then multiply that result by the energy density. So, we multiply 80 by 24 and get 1920. Then we multiply 1920 by the energy density of 1.2 and end up with a final energy load of 2,304 calories. For the protein load, you multiply the grams of protein in 1 liter by the number of liters of formula provided in a day. We have already seen that there are 55 grams of protein per liter of this formula. In addition to this, we know there are 1,000 milliliters in 1 liter, therefore 1920 milliliters equals 1.92 liters. Now, we can multiply 55 grams per liter by 1.92 liters and end up with 105.6 grams of protein, which should be rounded down to 105. Finally, since the formula is 81% water, we can obtain the volume of water delivered by multiplying the total volume of formula by percent H2O times 0.01. Within the parentheses, you move the decimal place of the percentage two places to the left to get 0.81, then multiply it by 1920, and the result is 1,555 milliliters of water. 
The last thing we'll do in this step is compare these values to our estimated nutritional needs. And we can see that calories and protein are satisfied, but we are short on fluid. It is for this reason that we have to establish appropriate free water flushes. Knowing that we want to match fluid to calories, we just need to take the desired milliliters of water and subtract the amount of water from formula. With 2,304 as the desired amount and 1,555 as the amount from formula, there is a water deficit of approximately 750 milliliters. Free water flushes can be administered two times per day, every 12 hours or Q12H, three times per day, every eight hours or Q8H, four times per day, every six hours or Q6H, or six times per day, every four hours or Q4H. For Mr. Jones, I would feel comfortable with any of these frequencies, although with the 750 milliliters, Giving it three times per day and six times per day leaves us with nice round numbers to work with at 250 milliliters and 125 milliliters respectively. I'm going to go with 250 milliliters Q8H. It's been quite a journey, but we are ready to write a prescription. We recommend a continuous infusion of the standard 1.2 calorie formula at 80 mLs per hour times 24 hours per day with 250 milliliters of water flushes Q8H. This provides a maximum of 2,304 calories, 105 grams of protein, and 2,305 milliliters of water per day. Our prescription is an appropriate starting point for the infusion and should be followed by monitoring of weight status, fluid status, and tolerance, and adjusted as needed. Here is a summary for this lesson. When it comes to calculations for continuous tube feeding, you can follow a six-step algorithm. First, you estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. Then, you select an appropriate formula, determine how much formula is required, and divide that amount by 24 hours to get the feeding rate. Next, you calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load, and establish the free water flushes. To finish the order, you write a prescription. There are several ways to estimate nutritional needs, but the easiest is a simple weight-based calculation for calories, protein, and fluid. Formulas can be standard, pre-digested, disease-specific, or blenderized, and within each category there is a range of energy density. Once a formula is selected, you determine how much is required by dividing the calories needed by the energy density. For example, if you need to give 2300 calories and choose a 1.2 calorie formula, the required amount of formula is 1917 milliliters. This is where you divide by 24 to get the feeding rate, which would be 80 milliliters per hour. At this stage, you calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load. For calories, multiply the feeding rate by 24 hours, and then multiply that result by the energy density. For protein, multiply the grams of protein in one liter of formula by the number of liters of formula given per day. For fluid, multiply the milliliters of formula given per day by percent H2O times 0.01. If the amount of fluid does not satisfy the goal, Establish free water flushes by taking the desired milliliters of water and subtracting the amount of water provided by the formula. Divide it evenly to give every 12 hours, 8 hours, 6 hours, or 4 hours, with an example being 250 milliliters every 8 hours. After all calculations and decisions have been made, you write the prescription.
We recommend a continuous infusion of the standard 1.2 calorie formula at 80 milliliters per hour times 24 hours per day with 250 milliliter water flushes every 8 hours. This provides a maximum of 2,304 calories, 105 grams of protein, and 2,305 milliliters of water per day. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.